So next question, right along those lines is, hey, Lee, I've got this column. It was looking really garbagey, and I think I fixed it. How do I know it's good? Is there a way to test a column? Um, yes, you can test a column. And in my um, in the hands-on class that we do here at Axion, we do a nice lab on talking about um, really how to how to go down that that path uh, of testing the column. And we have different what I call probes. I could tell the acidity of your column uh, by injecting you know, dimethylaniline. I could tell the, um, the the metal content of the column by looking for metal impurities by injecting something like quinizarin. So we do have cool probes that we look for different parts of your column. But let me take a big step back and say, there's a much better way to test a column. And that is whatever sample you run, you probably have a standard, you run it every day, that is your best test picks, because that's the sample you care about. Those are the component components you care about. So let's run an unknown. I'm sorry, let's run a known, let's run a standard. And I want you to, um, to measure the efficiency of the peaks. Now efficiency, if you don't know how to measure it, you can look that up on the internet, you look it up on other uh, online courses. Uh, it's a retention time divided by peak width, quantity squared times 5.5405. That gives you efficiency. That is the best measure of the goodness of the column. We now know how well the column is packed. If we get high efficiency, we know it's packed well, we have good fittings, good tubing, uh, mechanically it is sound. Then we um, can also look at the peak shapes, especially if you're interested in acidic or basic compounds, inject a base like aniline. Uh, if aniline tails, it's an indication that there are silanols, That's, that column is not good for basic compounds. We can do the same with uh, an acid like phenol. Um, uh, in my experience, acids and bases tail in the same thing, and that's the silanol. Uh, bases are much worse at tailing than, than anything else. So if a base looks good on a column, everything will look good on the column. Neutrals, don't care. So how do we test a column? Uh, just inject something you already have around. It, it, column companies typically inject toluene. They say that efficiency is best measured on a well-retained, well-behaved peak. What does that mean? Um, you know, peak with a capacity factor of at least five uh, uh, and, and something that's not an acid or base. So toluene, it's well-retained or any one of the millions of other neutral compounds out there. Measure its efficiency, see what the number is, compare it with what the column should be or what the column was when it's new. By the way, when you get a brand new column, uh, inside the box, there's a little certificate and it shows you the exact efficiency of the column. So um, I'm gonna, at risk to myself, I'm gonna walk off camera here and grab a column box and open side. And sure enough, right inside that box, we're gonna find our LC performance report. Uh, when you get this, this is not a, a bunch of marketing material. Maybe the other stuff is, but this is not marketing material. This is not junk. This is a unique one of a kind chromatogram. This was run on your column, not on your batch, not on the day your column was made, not a, a column that looked like yours on your exact serial number column. So it has the serial number and also on here, it has the number of plates. So theoretical plates on this column is, um, I don't have my glasses on, so you can probably read it better than I do, but over 11,000 plates, I'm saying, woohoo, that is a good column. Uh, this is a five centimeter, 1.8 micron column. So we're in the uh, uh, 10,000, uh, 12,000 plate range. Um, so you look at that number, they got 11,000 plates when they, the day they made the column. When you install it, you should get 11,000 plates, well, plus or minus 5%. Don't read too much into it, but you should get about the same number. Uh, and as the column ages, that number will drop. So a month from now, if that column is down to 10,500, am I gonna throw it away? Absolutely not. That's the same column. It's a great column. When it gets down to 6,000 plates, I'm gonna be like, oh my gosh, I've lost 40%, 45% of the efficiency of my column. Yeah, time to get rid of the column. So we're gonna use this efficiency measure as a measure of the goodness of the column. Uh, the ultimate way, to me, the ultimate measurement of a good column is does it resolve your peaks of interest? So you should have a standard. It should be your, uh, your um, separation mix, your demonstration that what you can separate to the world. It should contain your major compound, your compound of interest, and all the impurities and everything you're ever gonna look for. You should have them all in this mix. Let's say there's seven of them. And as long as you prove to the world that you could separate all seven, that you have a resolution of greater than 1.5 between all seven of them, then that to me proves that the column is still good. So yes, we can test a column. We can come up with an exotic probe uh, mix, um, uh, but an easier answer, just inject something you have sitting around the lab, uh, your standard that has more than one compound in it, so we can measure things like efficiency and a resolution and capacity factor and, uh, and, and selectivity. So I uh, hope that clears it up or hope that helps out. If you have more questions, come to the website, axionlabs.com. Um, and put in a request. Let us know what questions you want answered or let us know answers to the questions as well. Check out our YouTube site. We try and keep it uh, well filled. 
with answers to your most popular questions. So come back and visit.